We don't have enough room for puzzles and games on this shelf, so I want to build a taller one, sort of like this one, but a bit wider. For the sides of my bookcase, I need to glue one of these and one of these together, and looking at what I've got, I think these two and these two will barely be straight enough. I just glued these two boards together, and to make them align flat with each other, I just put some long reach claps across the joint. Sides glued up, top and bottom, and three of the shelves. I still gotta glue a whole bunch more. So I decided to add a thin strip of oak to the front edge so it doesn't get so dinged up. But unfortunately, to make sure I have contact along the whole way, that uses a lot of clamps. So here's one side glued up, and this is either the top or the bottom. This will just have to wait now. Some of the shelves ended up having just a tiny bit of twist in them, so I had to start them on the jointer. I think this might be the first time I've used the full 12 and a half inch widths of it at once. Do you want to go say hi to Oma? Just tell her I'm in the workshop right now planting something. Can you go upstairs to say hi to Oma, please, Kurt? With the shelves, I had the foresight to glue on this oak trim on the front before I play into the final thickness. That way I don't have to flush trim these separately. I'm taking lots of shallow passes to get those wide shelves down to their final thickness. And as I get to the final passes, I don't want that planar snipe on either end, so I'm pre-feeding a short piece and then afterwards feeding another short piece to get the snipe off the piece. And I just popped the breaker in that thing again. It doesn't like planing full width. Still not ready to set. Push. Yeah, try pushing it. Oh, there. And I keep feeding in those same two pieces of scrap before and after each piece, even though I've already planed them down. It doesn't matter as long as the infeed and outfeed rollers have something to rest on instead of just plunging down, that cuts down on the snipe. The sides, top and bottom of this bookcase are essentially going to form a big box. So it would be very logical to join the corners with a box joint. And my box joint jig is wide enough and strong enough to handle those pieces. But the problem is the bookcase is taller than it is from the table saw to the ceiling. So the sides won't fit. So another alternative would be to use the panter router. And I've got these uh, box joint templates that go on here to just uh, guide the router in a vertical direction in different slots to cut out a box joint. But the width of this, uh, even if I use all of these on the template holder, I can only do about 20 centimeters or 8 inches. And these sides are a fair bit wider than that. And another alternative for cutting those box joints is to use my slot mortiser because the router can move up and down quite a lot to just make a series of slots. And the advantage of this is I can put uh, two pieces side by side to cut the slot in both of those and avoid some tear out. But even so, there's also a problem here because this only goes up about 8 inches or 20 centimeters. So once again, I can't cut the full width of these pieces. But there's going to be a big piece of plywood against the back of it, which will hold the uh, back of it nice and square. The front could still rack a bit, so I'll just make my box joint only extend about two-thirds of the way across. And that way I can cut those slots with my slot mortiser. I got the short top and bottom clamped onto here using my uh, bandsaw resaw fence as a right angle jig and I'm ready to cut out the joint. Thank <laughs> you. 
The next slot would be another inch up and I've just run out of range here so that's as far as I can cut that box joint. I got uh, a bit of tear out on this side here so that'll probably be the bottom. But on the piece that was right up against it, there's no tear out at all. Now the long piece is clamped in. It's a good thing the work piece is stationary so I can just prop it up on the far end. Now I just got to cut the uh, butt joint part out with a bandsaw and then it should fit together. Oh, got a bit of gap here. Now it's closed. And now cutting the sides to their final length. I like to do that after cutting the first joint. That way if I screw it up, I have enough length left over, I can just cut it off and do it again. I was starting to get annoyed by that little bit of tear that I always get when the router comes out of the wood. So finally I had the idea of coming in from the other side by just a little bit. And that way when the router comes out, there's no tear out. And here's cutting out the last of the fingers for the box joints. I cut rabbits on the inside edges of the sides for the plywood to later go into. Getting ready to glue this piece on, but to make sure the joint is all closed, I clamped blocks on there to help squeeze it on there because both pieces are too long to really reach with the clamps. With a big joint like that, with a large surface area and fairly tight, the glue sets up fast, so I'm in a real hurry with the clamps to get it closed. Well, I think that's as closed and square as I'm going to get this one. That's a collected dust. I've got Kurt with me in the workshop because he has to stay home because he's the last of us who has come down with COVID and by far the biggest problem of coming down with COVID is all the anti-COVID measures which means the kids have to stay home for 10 days. But I was glad to get this COVID thing over with while the booster shots were still boosting. Now we just have to wait for everybody else to get over it. And now I have to do the last two joints of the bookcase at once. But I'm actually doing one at a time because I'd rather not leave the joint open that long. So I'm just kind of closing that one and hope that I can kind of bend it closed when I do the other one afterwards. I know there's glues that take longer to dry so no need to tell me about that in the comments. The manly thing to do is just to work faster. So I've got these two joints uh, glued together adequately. I had been thinking of making a middle shelf with fancy joinery too, but then I realized that would be too much to get together all at once.
This shelf could be nearly done, except I thought of uh, adding a bit of a cutout here to fit around the baseboards in the house. And I glued that part onto the main back to make for a step back to fit around the baseboard. Got everything varnished now. Now there's a middle shelf that needs to be rigidly mounted in there to help keep the sides parallel. I'm going to use the opposite of Fenty Joinery for that. I'm actually attaching that with pocket holes. It really pains me to use pocket holes. They're kind of an abomination, but it's the best way I can think of for attaching that middle shelf after the fact. There now, that's a big shelf. Next comes the challenge of moving it. After that, I took the back off again to make it easier to carry it up the stairs. Rachel was just all keen to fill this up right away to get this stuff out of the way. I like how it's rather thick boards, but I just didn't want to plane too much off of this. I don't have to worry about these sagging ever. And it's also screwed to the wall, so I don't have to worry about the uh, kids trying to climb up it at some point. So that's another Honeydew project checked off the list.